Rhino Engineering Graphics and Design Learners, this is episode 3 in the How to Hack Your Pet series only on How to EGD. And in this video, I'll be discussing and taking you through the necessary steps you need to take to absolutely nail your freehand concepts for the Civil Pet 2021. Let's get going. Okay, so in episode one of this series, we had a lengthy discussion on the design brief, the scenario specifications, and you've made your own list. Episode two, we did some research, and now in episode three, we need to take this information and actually come up with freehand concept drawings. And to do this, I'm gonna take you through the steps I take with my own learners to get this done. So first things first, let's look at what's required. A single story brick structure, structure with a general reception and a day spa. So we're gonna just go over here, we're gonna start with the heading, single story, building, and we're gonna split it into two parts. We're gonna have our general reception, and on the other side, the day spa. Okay, now we're gonna populate this specific field, and we're gonna use, of course, the actual design brief to do this. Okay, what? goes into this is we've got 65 square meters for the day spa or uh, for the reception sorry and what must it have it must have a modern entrance large doors it must have aluminium stacking doors all right which leads onto an 80 square meter deck timber deck okay that's important you'll see how i'm circling the areas here okay then there must be in this reception area a small coffee shop. Okay, and they say this is 12 square meters. Okay, what about this coffee shop? It will have to have, it opens onto the reception. And this is also with stacking doors. All right, there's a large fridge display. Prep and serving counters. Double zinc. Okay. A spin-off that's also included near the small coffee shop is a admin area. It's called admin offices, okay? And then also male and female toilets. Okay, of these, the female must have a toilet and a basin, okay? The males also must have a toilet, a urinal, and a basin. Okay, and then they specify in our design brief that this area here for the admin and the toilets, okay, they actually don't specify it, we deduct this. If we have 65 square meters for the reception, we've got 80 for the deck. This is a total here of 145 square meters, okay. The small coffee shop is 12 square meters, okay. Let's come back to the areas in a moment. Let's look at the day spa quickly. The day spa is specified as 100 square meters. Okay, very important. All right, what's included here is an open area, which must have, again, a reception, its own reception, and a seating area. Okay, there must be an indoor pool here, treatment room, and they actually specify this as 12 square meters for the treatment room. All right, there must be a staff area, staff room. Okay, built-in counters, uh, a zinc, change room, separate toilets, which in this case includes a basin also, and a zinc, and of course the toilet. Um, four lockers and space to change okay so it must be spacious okay you can see there's a whole lot that we have to think and consider when we're actually doing our design let's now look at the areas here that 12 meters is included in the 100 square meters for the day spa we've got 65 for the reception we've got 80 for the actual deck we have a small coffee shop of 12 square meters Okay, now if I take my calculator and calculate these together, we end off with, for our 
Remember the maximum here, of course, is 280 square meters in total that we have for this design, okay? So you add all of this up, we end up with approximately 23 square meters for the admin office, the male and female toilet. So this is important because these green items here is actually our areas that we're going to use when we get to the actual freehand concepts. And within this 100 square meter, we have this 12 square meters that fits in there. And the others aren't necessarily specified. So we, need, we will have to, you know, the pool isn't specified. The reception seating area, we'll have to play with that within the 100 square meters. Um, these two, the general reception and the small coffee shop, shop together is 145 square meters. So that, if we add all of this together, we get to 280 square meters, okay, which is important. Now, if I just do like a rough sketch here of what we have um, indicated, okay, this 200 square meters must be divided into what? We have a general reception area, okay, of about 65 square meters. Then we have a deck here, which is another 80 square meters. Then we have a toilet area and an admin, we'll just say admin, toilets, which is roughly our 23 square meters, okay? And we have a coffee shop, all right? That coffee shop is 12 square meters. Now this is the actual preparation area. And then we have a bigger part here, that's 100 square meters, which is our spa. Okay, so as we look at this already, if we think our uh, um, north is in this direction, we can now start coming up with some designs here. We have two main areas, general reception, decking on the um, western side. We have a connection in the center with our toilets, admin and coffee shop, and the spa, because it also specifies that from the coffee shop, you must have access to the spa, and you must have access from the reception to the coffee shop because these people will be served while seated on the deck. So you can see here how the different areas will work together. Let's just go a bit more in detail with a rough uh, drawing here quickly. On a blank piece of paper, now this is not not yet still your final drawing. So let's just do our north arrow, okay? And then we have our sewer line running on the north side. Okay, and we have our build, there's a building line running here at the bottom, and then we have that very steep contours going into the river. Okay, and this distance here is 35 meters. Okay, so if we look at this, we know that the sun will rise in the east, the morning sun. Okay, it will move over, noon sun will be roughly around about here and the evening sun on this side. I'm doing this because in the design brief, it actually says that it's important for you to have natural light coming in. The Blessbox Street uh, is here on the northern side, okay, because that's where the main entrance is. So if we look at our area that we have, okay, we can now just start roughly grouping this. If we, ha if we think of our general reception area is in this area, 65 square meters, for our general reception, we've got a slightly bigger area of 80 square meters, which is the deck, okay? Then you'll see between them, the toilets and the admin, that's 23 square meters, so that's really quite small, okay? And so we can have, let's say, two areas here, roughly each one of 10 square meters, 10 square meters approximately, and our coffee shop area, okay? In the middle, and that's 12 square meters. So you've almost have a smaller part in the middle, and then we have a much, much bigger part. Actually, the biggest part here, 100 square meters, is our spa. So if I now need to kind of start blocking this out for actual design purposes, we could have, you know, a nice block here that's divided into two. We'll have the reception area, and then a nice big deck here, okay? Then we have two more squared areas on this side, okay, which is our toilets and our admin, and then we have a coffee shop in the middle, and we have our bigger spa area on the side. So you see here, just with a little bit of playing around, we actually start defining areas, okay? And if you think of, let's just, we're just, just doing the basics, we're not trying to be fancy here. If we have 100 square meters, that means we have 10 square meters by 10 square meters, 
All right, here we have 5 by 2, for instance, another 5 by 2, roughly. Here we can have then a much larger area, that's 12 square meters, so we can have 3 by 4. And then we've got our 80, which can easily be 8 by 10. And here we can have about 6.5 by 10. Okay, so just with brainstorming like this, we've come up with a very simple design that's a start for us. Because if you just go straight to your actual um, graph paper or just start rough drafting, it's very difficult to come up with a design if you don't know what the areas are that you're looking at and how they fit together. So this is just one example. You can take your time and come up with your others yourself. Okay, with that as a basis, let's go over to our freehand pages. Okay, so most of you would have received a graph paper similar to this one from your teacher. I'll have this as a download in the description if you need one. Um, but I like to place this underneath a blank piece of paper and then it kind of shines through. And in, in just for this exercise, we're going to have each block represent at least two meters on my freehand drawing, uh, just for our exercise. And what I'm going to do now is really still absolutely draft. It should not make it to the main pad of yours. You can add these kind of pages at the back of your pad just as additional information. And we're going to take what we've um, done a few moments ago. We're going to make slight adjustment here. Remember, we've got 23 square meters um, over here, so I'm going to change that to 3 by 4. It's just a better ratio for us for this exercise. Okay, and now we're going to try and put this onto some kind of initial freehand concept. Okay, so we're going to start ourselves off the uh, general reception area. We've got 10 meters, so that's five blocks on this page one, two, three, four, five, and then another six and a half roughly. Okay, so we've got some reception area, and I'm just doing still outlines here. We're not putting in windows or doors or anything like that, just for us to get our uh, start here. Then we have a deck of another eight, eight meters going across, okay, from the general reception area, which is right here, reception, and this is our deck. So from the reception area, you need access to your um, coffee shop area. Okay, I'm going to flip these two around just for the sake of, um, of placement. So we'll have our coffee shop here, which is again 12, roughly 12 square meters. So let's do two, that's two, four, six. Okay. Sorry. Coffee shop area. And we'll have an admin, two admin and toilet areas here. All right, there'll be a walkthrough through the coffee shop area into our spa area. Okay, which is again um, 100 square meters. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's kind of a blocked layout. Now, in this, we have to still have our indoor pool. Okay, we have our toilets, and this is male and female. Here we have our admin. Okay, and this area is the coffee shop. And this is really where we're preparing the food. Né? In this area, we've got our deck, reception area. There's going to be seating, uh, lounge area here. Remember, this is a transition between the reception and deck that's um, almost an open stacking doors over here. Okay. You can make a note of that. We have our main entrance doors that also must be facing, it says large doors, okay, modern large doors. Okay, we've got a coffee shop and then in the spa area, let me just look at my notes. Okay, so in the spa area, we must have an open area again, which is your reception seating area. We can kind of just say it's in this area here, um, reception. As you come through this coffee shop, let's say there's a walkway here, you enter your reception area. Then the indoor pool, if you want nice natural light coming in, your indoor pool is best situated in this side, okay? And then you have your treatment rooms, your staff room, um, changing rooms, etc. So let's say your treat treatment room, which is another 12 square meters, is going to be in this area, treatment room, and then there's 
nice views going to the front here and on this side then you'll have your staff room um, staff room your um, changing rooms uh, your toilets etc okay because this will also be your coldest side with your morning sun and then the rest of the day the sun is on this side okay so that kind of gives you morning sun afternoon sun evening sun all right, that kind of gives you already a layout that you can now work with. Okay, so you can on this now make a couple of slight adjustments. You can start uh, saying, okay, if, th if these are my doors, okay, where am I going to have windows? Um, I'm going to have windows on this surface here. Uh, we've got our stacking doors that's going to go here. Okay, there's another group of stacking doors in between the seating area um, and the coffee, coffee shop area won't draw all of them here we can have an open arch entering into the reception area we'll have our pool okay one thing what i just noticed here the change rooms ideally that needs to be next to our pool area right that would be awesome staff room and toilets etc change room toilets must be in this area here which will work out so with that you can now start going through and start putting more a proportional drawing on a actual Piece of paper let me show you some examples okay if we look at free and concepts of previous year pat drawings there's a couple of things that comes out in this drawing that i can show you here that's very important first of all make sure you leave space for a clear border all around make sure you leave space at the bottom for your title block you'll have to have your page number your free and concept and of course your name here on the side okay then when you get your actual drawing, you need to keep to sun's standards. In otherwise, other meanings, you need to have your hatching of your walls correctly, your indication of your windows, of your doors correctly, your roof line going through, your decking indicated correctly, your different bathroom fixtures indicated correctly, the labeling of the different rooms correctly. All right, plus it asks for key measurements also according to sons and then it's also asking for you to show the different areas in a table on this page and of course your north arrow so make sure that the standard of your designs are at least at a grade 12 level my learners when they did these drawings they had that graph paper underneath this page and they took their time and i promise you this wasn't their first attempt you have to like i tried to lead you do a couple of drafts that you can have a look at. If I show you one of my previous learners at the back, you can see here how they really thought it through their concept designs, okay? And, and did a couple of rough drawings to just get an understanding. And they added this at the end of the path, but it helped them in preparing them for the actual freehand drawings. There's no way that they can, could have come up with freehand drawings like this just on the first try it's not going to work like that so please take your time and of course the requirement has changed that they just need a floor plan from you you don't need to add any elevations in this freehand concept if we look at the actual document let's read this together quickly okay prepare neat freehand drawings of the layout an example a floor plan of two possible design solutions people you need to make one per a3 drawing for the proposed new building each freehand drawing must show the correct presentation of all the building features. That's the doors, the windows, the built-in cupboards, the, um, all of that. The permanent fixtures, your toilets, your uh, zincs, your basins, the shower, etc. The timber deck must be indicated. Your roof lines must be indicated as well as primary dimensions and labels. That's labeling the rooms, day spa, reception, etc. The calculation of the floor area must be included for what? The reception area the total area of the day spa and the total area of the entire building why they want to be sure that you're within the limits that we set for ourselves or they set for you that we have a good understanding here of this actual process uh, including the timber deck must be clearly shown in a table on the drawing sheet of each drawing so include the timber decks 80 square meters also on that okay then some notes Grid graph paper must be used to generate the freeing drawings. This is a must, okay? You can't not use grid graph paper. 
so that all features and fixtures are drawn to proportion. So the graph paper ensures that you draw to the correct proportions. The grid graph paper must use being included in the PAT portfolio. So in the end of the day, that actual graph paper that you use goes in the back of your PAT as proof that you did use it, must include it. Right, then electrical fittings, waste water disposal systems are not required, so don't worry about that. All drawings must comply with SUNS. That means make sure you use the same conventions that you did in your actual civil drawings that you were taught at school. These drawings must provide clear evidence that a high level of competency has been attained in freehand drawings. People, make sure um, that this doesn't look like your little brother or sister did it at home. Okay, let's look at the actual summative assessment sheet because this again is important. This is what you're going to get marks for. Okay, so when you double check your own drawings, you can actually start giving yourself marks here. Did you include all the building features? You'll see they all is em emphasized, building features, including the timber deck. Do we see that in your drawings? If yes, one out of one. Did you correctly present all the building features? In other words, do you have your hatching done? Is your windows with their sills, your door openings, etc.? Is it correct pre presented? If yes, two out of two. Did you include all the fixtures? There's a list of basins, toilets, urinals, etc. If you miss the urinal and you get everything else, you can't get one here. Okay, so make sure all are included, correctly presented. Presentation of all fixtures according to SUNS, that's again 2 out of 2. Here, this is why the graph paper is important. Relative size, proportion of all features to each other. Is there a balance in your design? Is the proportions correct? That's a 2 out of 2. Then, did you put the primary labels in, in other words, wait, in other words the room numbers, etc. And the primary dimensions. You can have a look at this one. It's the primary labels and the dimensions that's correctly indicated. Okay, then three area calculations shown within the specifications. Now you can draw, you can always do more, but not less than three. That's here on the side. Okay, with again the total area, and then this is all up to your uh, teacher and your moderator's impression. Your design is it functional and effective utilization of the space? Two out of two. So, people, this should. Um, give you an understanding of what is required for your pet. Please start yourselves off with a little bit of a rough draft like this and a mind map like this. It will help you move yourselves forward in getting your designs optimized. And of course you have to have two variations. So there's opportunity for you to grow through this process as you do your first and your second concept design. All the best. Now it's your turn.